Hola, mi nombre es Darío. Hi, my name is Darío Januszewski. I'm a member of the staff of Saragon Networks in the South Cone in Brazil. And today, I'd like to talk to you about how the unbundled Wagner's college can unblock the 5G potential. Maybe before talking about the necessities of the network infrastructure, we should understand why we need to change this network infrastructure. To do that, we should bear in mind the significance of 5G, which is much more than a new generation of mobile network. In fact, it's a concept that generates new horizons and new challenges. If we consider that 5G is a new technology that gives us the possibility of benefiting from the augmented reality, virtual, cloud, gaming, remote office, fit from the point of view of broadband fixed accesses. It's an excellent option to the present wireline systems. Considering the point of how to include 5G in the industrial world, we can think that it will help the real-time applications in the smart agriculture, industrial, IoT, smart cities, in defense, autonomous vehicles, in healthcare, touch internet, in the use of drones for surveillance, all this requires large handling of data in real time, and in real time means networks with very low latency and networks with capacity to be quickly adapted to the necessities. This generates challenges not only in terms of RUN itself, but also regarding the network infrastructure required to support this network. Let us say that with the characteristics brought by the 5G, we will obviously have the necessity of more capacity per devices, more devices, new types of devices, because we will have more services. And to be able to present these characteristics, it will be necessary to review, i.e., it was necessary to review the network topologies, frequency bands, more spectrum, large capacity density, as we have more areas to cover with a large capacity per area unit. Virtualization of network services, low latency, high availability, obviously strict security systems. This situation generated multidimensional challenges in 5G. We have challenges concerning services, more capacity, more sites, latency, service orchestration, via network division per run band, large larger coverage, larger capacities, more sites. In network scenario, more capacity, more new sites, smaller latency. In a certain way, the concept of new radio for 5G, even as the spectrum has been rethought, we need new technologies, new bands with millimetric wave bands, are here for accesses that permit the use of extra-large channels, larger channels in all the work bands, which permit ultra-high capacity physical resources per segment designation, which permit the segmentation of the network and to end like the orchestration of services. Massive MIMO, a well-set concept in 5G to explore the maximum possible capacity of the available channel and flexible slot-based framework, which permits the applications of critical missions. If we consider the network requirements, today everything leads us to say that the median channel to be used in average bands will be around 100 MHz, and the channel used in millimetric bands or in the microwave high part, that is between 24 and 40 GHz, it will correspond to 400 MHz. 
Obviously, with the size of channel, the cable applications are discarded. In this case, the only possibility we have is obviously the necessity to rethink the infrastructure network to comply with this technology. Why? Because much more capacity will be required. The spectral efficiency technologies alone are not enough. It's necessary to use larger channels. Due to that, many administrators are permitting the grouping of channels in 6 to 42 microwave bands. For example, the conventional channeling of 28, 40, and 56 megahertz that were in the recommendation of the ITU. Many administrations are presently permitting, they are flexibilizing the grouping of these channels to obtain higher capacity. The larger channels mainly are available in the millimetric waves. Therefore, we obviously see a way to update the hauling. It is the fiber. However, in the places where we cannot use fiber, we have radio solutions. In the case of microwaves of 4 to 42 gigahertz, we have systems that have or that get channelizations of up to 224 megahertz. In B band and E band, we have the possibility of channelizations from 250 to 2000 megahertz. And in the new millimetric bands, above 100 megahertz of operation, which are the D and the W band, we have channeling from 2000 to 5000 megahertz that permit a traffic of up to 100 gigabytes per second. If we consider, obviously, discarding the possibilities of the networks that are born at greenfields, the network infrastructure will have to put together the 5G networks and the legacy networks. There is no other option, as this is the most cost-effective solution. This means that the first deployment will probably be done over the legacy network in a non-standalone way. For that, obviously, the new ones the new radios will have to be installed or placed together in existing sites. And this will require a quick deployment to adequate the existing infrastructure network. That is the only option that we or the operator has to split the networks and get real standalone networks that comply with the 5G structure as well as the legacy structures. What is the meaning of it? It means that the technological decision of doing the split of the structure of the 5G technology permits, in a certain way, the flexibilization of this installation. Considering that, in the past, we had a core or an SPC that served directly via a backhaul, the e node B, this concept in 5G changed due to the split, and today we can split it in three units, the central unit, the distributed unit, and the radio unit. On the other hand, there is a challenge here. What used to be a backhaul is now splitting three types of network with different requirements. The backhaul that connects the core network to the central unit, and after it, a mid-hole that connects the central unit to the distributed unit, and from that point, a front hole as far as the radio units. What's the challenge here? The challenge is how much each of these network segments requires in terms of capacity and latency. If we check the back hole and the mid hole, the capacities requirement is similar, but the latency requirement is in the mid hole. 
it's sometimes 10 times more strict than what we require for a backhoe. On the other hand, or on another way, the front hole, besides requiring a more strict latency Two hundred and fifty microseconds in average also requires a much higher capacity between six to ten times the backhose capacity. This means that the effort to adequate the existing networks and the generation of a backhaul becomes imminent and perhaps the most problematic part to solve as we obviously cannot use fiber in 100% of the front hall network. Therefore, this disaggregation of the network and, on the other hand, the centralization of the network permits us to have remote radios with lower cost and a better coordination between adjacent channels, but it's necessary to have a front hall with high capacity and very low latency, which are the advantages of decentralizing the run. The advantage is the reduction of CAPEX, and it simplifies the process of site acquisitions, the reduction of the number of network elements per site. We also have a reduction of the OPEX, as the expenses with energy, rent, acquisition, labor work, as we can optimize, automatically configurate via the SDN. We also have commercial advantages as the experience of the user is improved. It maximizes the network capacity, it reduces the interference between cells, the capacity increases easily, now and obviously the safety is improved, as we have less functionalities in the remote sites. Which are the challenges? High capacity and very low latency required in the front hall. And obviously the cost and the size of the required transmission network. If we think that to comply with 100 MHz channels, for example, we need a 4 GB backhaul per second. When we do a split of the back hall to mid hall and front hall, in the front hall we will need approximately 22 to 25 gigabytes per second. And this is one of the consequences of the split. Therefore, again, the point is here. 100% fibers? Of course not. It's not possible. Then the radio solutions become, again, necessary and viable. The radio manufacturers obviously also made a big effort in terms of research and development to solve this problem. There are companies that are improving their technology over the last years. There are companies that generated their own chipsets not only DRF, but also the network processors, in order to get high capacity. Presently, the 4096 modulations over 8000 QAM are a fact, the possibility to group channels even, for instance, in the microwave bands, which previously were channels of uh, 28, 56 megahertz up to 224 megahertz, are also a fact. The possibility of multi-band solutions in which we make use of millimetric frequencies to get high capacity together with the availability of microwave systems. All that is integrated in the same antennas to reduce the TCO. It's a fact as well. Therefore, we can say that nowadays we have at least five characteristics that the microwave radius and the millimetric wave radius can offer to the 5G to do a rapid deployment, updating a network intending to be a multi-vendor, integration services. All that is possible with radio and radio technology.
For example, we presently have radios that are multi-core, they are having embedded carriers completely full outdoor with the possibility to change the channelization in a quick way as long as all the deplexer units, the passive mediation units, are not part of the same product. It's impossible not to consider integration radios to obtain higher capacity and do that via the aggregation of data in physical chamber, in layer 1, so that we now have very compact solutions of two units, four carriers up to 4G per second, to get rapid deployment, adaptation modeling with more than 13 steps that permit ensuring that the link is available even with reduced capacity. The multiband solutions are presently a fact. Incorporating the use of microwave systems with millimetric wave systems to be able to reach higher capacity and ensure the SLA to the 5G applications. MIME solutions are also a fact in sites where there is not the possibility of having channel availability. The MIMO solutions permit exploring the maximum capacity of the available channel, reaching 4 gigabytes per second in channelizations of 112 megahertz in the same frequency channel. Obviously, one of these challenges is in the hands of the administrators in the spectrum of each country, because it's necessary to count on the administrator's flexibility to make use of the advantages that the radio systems are propitiating. The other challenge is presented by the operating companies themselves, as it's necessary some proximity and a way to reconsider the ways to use a mean that's limited, because in the end, the radioelectrical spectrum is a limited mean. It's being done in some countries, and the operating companies are coordinating among themselves the use of the frequencies and channels in order to avoid interference and not to generate undesired situations with other operating companies. There are other types of solutions, obviously, regarding radio. We could talk a lot longer. We also have solutions for medium and long distances of high capacity and green systems. Maybe the message is that, obviously, it's not possible to do a rapid deployment only with fiber solutions. Therefore, the radio solutions are always a viable alternative, cost-effective and of quick deployment to permit doing the transition of the present networks to 5G. Thank you.